capture input from a user's keyboard in React Native, you're going to want to use the text input component. So we're going to go ahead and import that from React Native. Now, text input is just like any other component. We'll go ahead and render this below our status bar. And it's going to be a self-closing component, meaning we just do that slash at the end of the component rather than having to write a, another text input like so. Rather than doing that, we can just use this self-closing component. Now, if I save this, we're not really going to see anything because by default, a text input doesn't have any styling. So if we go ahead and add a style prop to it, create a styles.input, then we can go ahead and style this. Now, a text input can be styled just like a normal view component could. So we can go ahead and give it a width, let's say of 200. Uh, again, we're not going to see anything. So let's go ahead and add a border color. I'll just set this to gray. We'll give a border width of one, maybe a border radius of 20, and we can see it. And now we can actually see where that input is. So if I go ahead and click in there, you can see we see that little blue icon or cursor popping up there. Uh, let's give that a little bit of breathing room. We'll just give it a padding of 20. Actually, let's drop that down to 10. It looks kind of silly. Okay, so we've got this basic text input, and now we can go ahead and type into it. And this works perfectly well, but right now we're not actually capturing or doing anything with that input. So what we could do is go ahead and let's import, or let's create some new states. So let's go ahead and say input, we'll say set input, and this is going to equal react.useState, and we'll just default that to an empty string. Now we can update this input variable, which we can go ahead and let's just console.log input as it changes. We can go ahead and say on change text. This is going to give us a function which we can go ahead and access the text that's updating it. So that'll be the text. And we can then go ahead and call a set input with that text. Now if we take a look at the React Native debugger and we actually go ahead and type into this, clear this out, you can say hello. And you can see this is going to update every time I type a character in here. Now this gives us a whole host of options uh, because we can now capture that input and use it somewhere. Uh, let's say we want to submit this when someone presses that return button. Well, we could go ahead and say on submit editing, we can go ahead and call a function. Let's just go ahead and say alert your message is and then we can go ahead and use string interpolation to drop that input in that they typed. So let's go ahead and type hello there, press return, and we get that alert message. Your message is hello there, exactly what we typed. Cool, so we've captured text, we've managed how we can actually go ahead and submit that just using the actual keyboard that the platform gives us. Well, what if when we press return and submit this, we also want to clear out this input. Right now, the text input is what's called an uncontrolled component. It captures data, it gives us data, but we can actually control what's being displayed. That's just purely what the system's doing. We can turn this into a controlled component by using the value prop. And if I go ahead and press value in here, this will go ahead and show us what exactly that value is going to be uh, rather than just being managed internally. We don't know exactly what's going in there, we're just responding to what's being given to us. So with all that said, I could go ahead and pass input in here as the value. And now if I go ahead and press return, we still get the alert, everything's happening there. But if after pressing the alert, I go ahead and say, I want to set my input to an empty string. Now when I press return, we still get our message, but our input value goes away. Now let's say we've got this plain input. It's not really clear it's an input before we actually type into it, and even then it's not super clear. What if we want to give a brief message to tell someone what to use this input for? Well, we can use the placeholder prop, and this placeholder prop takes a string as an argument, and I'm just going to say type a message in here. And what's nice here is even though we are, let me go ahead and refresh this, uh, even though we're not 
active on this input, you can see that message in here. And when we do become active on this input, you still see that message. But as soon as you start typing in here, you can see that our placeholder is going to be overridden by our value. Once the value is not an empty string, our placeholder is going to go away and we can start typing in and displaying our content. Now the final thing I want to show you in this video is the different keyboard types. If we look at our keyboard right now, it's just a typical QWERTY keyboard. Well, if we want to change this, we could go ahead and pass a keyboard type prop to it. And in here, we've got a bunch of different options. You can do all kinds of different things. There are some different differences between iOS and Android, but there is a subset of that of all the available ones that work on both iOS and Android. So let's go ahead and say we want to set this as a decimal pad. Now if we save this, you can see we're getting all the numbers in here instead of numbers and letters. So we could go ahead and start typing in our numbers. Likewise, actually, I'll give you a bonus one after this. Uh, we could go ahead and say our keyboard appearance. If you're using a light mode or a dark mode, you go ahead and specify your keyboard appearance to say we always want this to be dark or we always want this to be light. Just kind of a nice thing as dark mode and light mode exists. So that's a super brief intro to the text input component, which gives us that ability to capture input via the user's keyboard, which opens up a whole realm of capabilities. Now, text input is a very powerful component with a lot of options, so be sure to check out the React Native documentation on all the available props to the text input. If you're looking for any more tips, tricks, or tutorials on React Native, be sure to check out reactnativeschool.com.